get my radio voice going. So let's see if we get any other other questions in here. But yeah, to answer the question, a carb is a carb, but a food has different nutritional values. Okay, a lot going on there. Uh, so let's see if anyone wants to chat about this. We got some people in here. Marissa, hello at the gym now. Well, good. Marissa, you got any questions for me? You're at the gym. You got any lifting questions? Steve, D. Blah blah. What's popping? Uh, I actually don't. I don't use orals to be honest. I used to love D. Blah. Um, but that's a whole different thing. We're not going to discuss all that on Facebook. They don't like all that. You got any questions for me, though, Steve? Got a few viewers in here, so we can get some topics going. I may discuss some carbs further then. Or I may discuss some of my, my bench training. The bench is going really, really good. I've uh, been very, very happy with that. That's, again, something I'm, I'm very pleased with, mainly because so many people told me that my bench goals are unreachable. Like, look at your training history, look at your age. You're not going to reach this or that. It's delusional. And yet here I am right there at the cusp of doing what even other coaches told me that I was not going to be able to accomplish. But yeah, really happy with that set this week. 315 for eight pause reps on the bench with flat heels as a long arm bencher, right? I have a six foot one wingspan. That's what my wingspan is. Not the best in the world for, for being uh, a good bench presser. It puts me at a big leverage disadvantage, but you know, I'm still getting it done. And, and I think that goes to show that even though we have different gifts in different areas, things that we are just structurally not built for, we can still get really good at through hard work and intelligent application. Like it can still be done, it's just gonna be more difficult, right? We're gonna have a different learning curve. Uh, but again, at the end of the day, uh, in that case, perfect example there, I've always been kind of mocked by other coaches and lifters for having a mediocre bench press. Being, they're like, dude, you're a, a ridiculous deadlifter, but your bench sucks. Like, they're like, your bench sucks so bad. Yet here I am now finally at the cusp of, of an elite bench press. It took a lot of work. I'm not built for the lift. Here's what I would say, uh, and again, some people disagree with this, and I don't want to name names because someone who is a PhD, who is basically my arch nemesis, who we have some really bad blood, I'm going to agree with him. Oh, that hurts to say. I'm going to agree with him. Um, you should keep your carbs as high as humanly possible while cutting. So my maintenance calories are over 4,000. I don't know what yours is. Calorie deficit. All right. Uh, thank you for always being someone who tells people what they need to hear, not what they want to hear. I know, Chris. Chris, that's cost me a lot, a lot of money. <laughs> that's cost me a lot of money to not sell people bullshit. It really has. And believe me, and I hate to say this, dude, there have been times, there have been times, and I'm like, had I just sold out had I just sold out a decade ago, like everyone else, considering how early I came into the game with YouTube and everything, how many millions would I be sitting on? God. Man, it cost me a lot of money, to be honest. <laughs> but at least I can look myself in the mirror, so there is that. Didn't sell out. So I guess that's, got, that's where our integrity has to be worth something. Discuss the other part. Can't put a price on integrity. That's that's true. That is true, brother. Chris, you know what would be amazing? You know what I would really love? We could keep our integrity like that and still make millions of dollars. Now that would that would be a real win right there, baby. Keep your integrity and still make a lot of money. Oh man, that would be living the dream. Dave, I appreciate the stars. Thank you, brother. 
All right, what else do we have to talk about? Let's get some questions. There's a few, there's only a few of you watching, but, but there are normally some active engagers. So if you guys have me here a few more minutes. Oh, then we get the people, what do you do for your traps, coach? I'm like, these days, rows. Rows and deadlifts. People don't seem to grasp that concept biomechanically of how much rows work or gear traps. There's even points of contention now in the literature as to how much a shrug even works the trap. If it, if it really is the primary mover or not. Let that one sink in. Uh, rows, rows will build your traps, absolutely. Of course, that their cell tech doesn't hurt. All right. Come on, guys, toss me a few more questions. It's getting slow. We're winding down here. I'll give you guys about 30 seconds to pop up another question, and I may, I may wind this down. Because again, the people will drop out who are watching if there's nothing, nothing active going on. What well, depends on what company, Jerry? What do you mean depends on the company? <laughs> yeah, I think I think. How's the housing market in Houston? Mm, expensive as hell. The, Jerry, the, the big issue is really the mortgage rates right now. The mortgage rates are crazy. But houses, I don't know, house, the housing market's okay here. Houses are still way cheaper than, than most places. Uh, even, even with the, the prices right now, you'd be shocked at what you can get for the money here. If you live almost in any other major city in the U.S. and you come look in Houston, again, not inside the loop. We're not talking deep inside Houston, talking the suburbs, which is where millions and millions of people live. Right? All the suburbs around Houston, what you could get here for 300 grand compared to a lot of other places would blow your mind. Uh, like I know people in California, they're like, oh, this is a $2 million house. And I'm like, that's a $350,000 house. What are you talking about? You can buy that same house in Spring or in Conroe or in Cyprus on the outskirts of Houston. $350,000, $400,000 maybe. Same thing that's costing you $2 million. In, uh, in New York or California. Yeah, it's definitely a buyer's. Well, I don't know about that. Yeah, they're, they're going fast, but it's the, the, the problem is the bidding wars too. That's a big part of it. Like you're seeing a lot of that of, of the asking price and then they sell it for more. They don't even take the asking price. Like they were asking 350,000, but when six people bid on it, it ends up going for 400,000. Even though it's listed at 350. Yeah, I live in New York, the prices for houses here. I've, I've seen David and I have some clients and stuff in different areas and I've seen, I've discussed some of this stuff with them. Yeah, New York, it's crazy. You think Walmart's within houses increase the value of the house? What do you mean Walmart? Jerry, I think that's a typo. <laughs> All right, guys, we've, we've been past 20, 20 minutes here. Uh, we've, we've touched on some other non-training and fitness topics there, discussing uh, the housing market. There's my guitars back there. See, I still have them on, still playing. I will eventually put some more guitar clips up. I will put some more up. I've been working with a lot of ZZ Top stuff lately. It's kind of my, my thing at the moment. 